Yeah, you too can get in on the action on Twitter. Just use the hashtag magically appearing at the bottom of your screen or email us your money at skynews.com.au. Julia Lee, uh, we've come back from the weekend. I hope you had a great one. In the end, not a great session on the market, slightly negative. James, it was always going to be a difficult session on the Australian share market, given that we saw so many of the big caps on our market going ex-dividend. In particular, Telstra, Commonwealth Bank, we saw UGL and JB Hi-Fi all trading without their dividends today. So those four stocks accounting for around about a 20-point loss on the Australian share market. And given that at one point during the day we actually cracked into the black, it's a positive uh, result by the Aussie share market. We did see some money flowing into other areas, though, and I guess one of the key beneficiaries uh, was the healthcare space. We saw primary healthcare, ResMed, as well as um, Ramsey Healthcare all reaching a fresh 52 week high today. And I guess if we have a look at the rest of the week, it's still dividend paying season, and we will see the likes of West Farmers, Cochlear, QBE Insurance, realestate.com, as well as Santos paying dividends this week. And all of those stocks were trading higher today, with the one exception of QBE Insurance. And we actually saw realestate.com uh, reaching an all time record high, and West Farmers is reaching a 52-week high. So it does look like a lot of investors out there looking for those dividends and that was reflected in the volumes. We saw a massive $6.2 billion worth of stock being traded today. So it's great to see some nice volumes on the Aussie share market. Unfortunately though with the Shanghai Composite down by 1.2 percent later during the Australian session we did see those mining gains um, really go up up in a puff of smoke and that's really behind the decline that we've seen in the Australian market today. So down by 0.1 percent but given that we saw the likes of CBA and Telstra going ex-dividend not a bad result. From BHP Billiton I mean a dividend is going to be a focus saw the likes of of Rio increase their dividend but also if there any more sort of I suppose talk in regards to that US shale gas right down. If we have a look at expectations for BHP Billiton it is expected that we will see a fall in profit. Last year their profit result was 22 billion US dollars. The consensus this year is 16.9 billion dollars and the dividend to remain steady with the interim dividend of 55 cents as well as the previous corresponding period of 55 cents. Now the reason why consensus is that the dividend will remain unchanged is because we know that cash flows have been under pressure. We've seen falling commodity prices. In fact we're only expecting to see growth in two of their divisions and that's the iron ore and the thermal coal division. The, the other uh, divisions because of the falling commodity prices are some of the industrial action that they've seen over uh, their business we are expecting to see declines there. Capital expenditure is going to be a big one. We have seen uh, BHP's competitors in this area some of the global miners really cutting on uh, cutting down on their capital expenditure and if we have a look at expectations it is that FY13 we'll see capital expenditure of about 20 billion dollars. Now in the past BHP has committed to 80 billion dollars worth of capital expenditure over five years. That's been paired back a bit to about 60 billion dollars worth of capital expenditure over five years but of course some of the things that the market's going to be watching for is whether that 30 billion dollar expansion of the Olympic Dam is going to get go ahead. 19 billion dollars in that Port Hedland expansion whether that's going to go ahead. So capital expenditure is going to be a very important part and that's because iron ore which is such a key driver is at 31 month lows. We're seeing iron ore prices at 110 US a tonne. It still means that this is a huge profitable area for BHP. In fact prices will probably have to fall to about 37 US a tonne from the 110 that we're seeing now. But what it does mean is that the profit expectations have been pulled back and so there is an expectation that we could see capital expenditure uh, expectations being pulled back as well. So we're watching for more write downs possibly in the mag manganese as well as the alumina area we've already seen in the shale gas area. Some surprises that we haven't really seen much in terms of petrohawk but this is going to be a big one for the Australian market. It comes out after hours on on Wednesday and we'll see a reaction by its shares overnight in the US, the UK and then on the Australian market on Thursday.